I'm Rafael Schatz, I'm Solution Architect at Juniper Networks, and I'm going to show you a demo of a DDoS mitigation system built out of the Juniper routers. The one which allows for efficient mitigation of terabit per second attack without breaking the bank. But first I want you to spend some time on understanding why we are looking at that and what is the solution principles. As we all know, attack volume is growing exponentially. Last week we noticed over terabit per second attack and this memcached attack passed the one terabit mark with flying colors. Number of attack is growing fast and the life of attack reduces. All this impacts network ability to deliver services with expected quality, which generate the support call and generally dissatisfied customers. It is a time and SP are looking into something about to do something about that. And what I'm going to show is this something. First of all, we are not solving the all work hundred. We are not addressing the full landscape of the security threats. Uh, the SP is exposed to. We are specifically looking at the volumetric DDoS attack because this volumetric DDoS attack is the one which causes the collateral damage and impacts the service provider business the most. What I mean by collateral damage? Let's assume that there is a DDoS attack targeted at victim system. And the victim system supposed to be, by intention of the attacker, taken out of the service. However, if it's a volumetric attack, it travels and uh, the network and its uh, consumed resources like overload links in the net service provider network, which causes the collateral damage to other customers. So therefore, this high volume DDoS attack need to be uh, stopped at the last, at, la at least on the ingress to the network. And we are looking at this screening a multiple terabit per second of traffic as received by service provider on their peering surface. It is not the case that uh, DDoS mitigation is not in place. Actually, it does, most many of the service provider is using some kind of current DDoS mitigation technique and the current deployment is based on the principle of more or less selective redirection of traffic to the scrubbing center, where the traffic is cleaned and delivered to the customer. However, this principle requires delivery of the dirty traffic, so the whole attack traffic volume, to the scrubbing center, which consume network resources. And also, the scrubbers need to be able to accommodate the DDoS attack at the full volume. So if it's a terabit of DDoS attack, last, like last week, there is a need for terabit capacity of scrub, on scrubbing center, and that's costed. Also, this infrastructure is generally used by service provider to provide a paid value-added service to the end users. So there are customers of service provider which don't subscribe for it, therefore their traffic is not screened and not cleaned. It's delivered over the network, including the DDoS traffic. The above model, economical, the above model is found by many of service providers recently as uh, economically unsustainable, especially because the volumetric DDoS strength is growing very fast. So, DDoS solution for the service provider, cost of it need to be reduced. First, what we can reduce? Reduce the scrubber's capacity needs. Best to the zero, but at least reduce. Reduce the traffic need to, that need to be carried over the network due to redirection. Best to the zero, but every solution is slightly different. Discard DDoS traffic, even for the customer that do not subscribe for protection service. However, it's not about doing good for them and protecting them. It's just to protect the network. So only those 
DDoS traffic that impacts the network, the high volume DDoS, will be discarded, should be discarded. We not have to be perfect here. And how? The answer is very simple. We have to discard more or even more, most of the best, best, the best traffic at the ingress router. But at the same time, we may not discard the good traffic. And selection of packets in fly to be discarded or accepted based on L3 and 4 headers is found insufficient. With that, we are very close to the demo. And the first few slides, next few slides, I show you uh, what the demo is about, what is the setup, and then we go, go to the live presentation. So the demo is, uh, shows the Juniper framework for the DDoS protection of the service provider infrastructure. Again, I re reiterate the goal, protect the network infrastructure from collateral damage caused by DDoS. We may not have to detect every single attack. We not have to be very, very accurate. DDoS detection engine, use it during this demo, it's a third-party software. We use the Corero Smart, smart, uh, smart Wall. For the traffic data export, we, we need to feed this detection engine somehow. In the demo, we use sampled port mirroring. This method is used because it reduced the amount of vo the volume of the traffic which needs to be delivered for detection engine for analysis. analysis. But at the same time, it provides the samples and information about the payload of the traffic. So uh, this analytic en analytics engine can find the fingerprint of the attack and use it later. When we come to the mitigation enforcement, which as we said before, is executed on MX router, we use the firewall filters with flexible match. Flexible match is the Juno's uh, functionality which allows to extract from the packet payload, not from the headers, from the payload certain number of bytes, compare them with the pattern and uh, decide if the pa packet is matching or not. And for the programming this firewall filter to avoid the uh, regular configuration, user, user interface, commit time, etc., we use netconf to the ephemeral configuration database, which is the uh, fast configurable, uh, configuration interface of, of the Junos. On your left side, you can see the demo setup. I use Ixia to generate traffic, two routers. One is the MyPeering router, the one on, on the left where the all magic happens. The, the one on the right is just used to show, is there just to show that uh, DDoS detection analytics system could be remote and uh, not have to be uh, on, uh, connected directly to the peering router. This, in this demo, I'm simulating one terabit of the peering traffic uh, with assume it uh, sampling rate for the mirror rate, 1 to 1000. So one, my 1 terabit traffic become a 1 gigabit of the samples. Not that much. However, I do not have in this demo 1 terabit worth of the Ixia interfaces. So you can see that this is a 10 gigabit traffic and the configuration of the router is 1 to 10 sampling, which comes down to the same, uh, to the same result. You can also see the, what kind of attacks I'm generating. So Cargan, UDP flute, DNS amplification, NTP amplification, and some SYN flute attacks, which are technically speaking not volumetric one, but rather a state exhaustion one. During the demo, which I'm going to run in a few minutes, I would like you to focus on the DDoS DNS amplification attack against the destination IP1 and legitimate DNS traffic. These two flows set on the Ixia share the same source IP addresses, same source port addresses, same destination ad port, and same destination address. Similarly for NTP traffic. With that, I'm going to switch to the demo. My demo, I will start with a quick look at the Correro dashboard of the uh, DDoS detection engine. You'll see that there is no ongoing attack. You can see that 
some traffic is received. This is the sampled traffic to ana for analysis and there is no attack detected. Also, this is my peering, MX peering router. I monitor the content of the mitigate firewall filter, which is empty at the moment. Finally, we go quickly to the Ixia. And uh, we generate different flows. Uh, the first two are Chargen, the another two are DDoS attacks, and this, and then we have the TCP attack and NTP attack, amplific uh, NTP amplification attack. All the attack traffic is now uh, suspended, and only legal traffic is flowing through the system. So we can quickly look at the statistics. Uh, right. So we generate and receive same 8 gigabit of uh, legitimate traffic. I have also uh, statistics of flow, so that my attack flows, which are on the top, it shows that there is, uh, there is no traffic generated and no traffic received. Also, there is no received frames during this period. I have two graphs, which will monitor. The first graph is all uh, flows which simulate the attacks. Of course, there is nothing at the moment, all zeros. And the last graph is my DNS legitimate traffic, which I ask you to focus on, and also NTP legitimate traffic. So we are almost ready to start the demo, start the attack traffic. Uh, just before we do that, I switched. To, uh, I ran these uh, statistics here and start collecting data on the on the graphs. One and. And the second one very soon. So we say that uh, our legitimate DNS and NTP traffic is flowing. I can also see that there is no attack traffic. So far, so good. So, and we also can see that there is, there is nothing in the mitigation filter. So let's start quickly our attack traffic. Attack is launched, or actually multiple attacks are launched, so we can see the traffic of the attack. And we keep all of this for some time. We see that most attack is already stopped, one is still ongoing. In the meantime, in the meantime we can see that there is some instability in a traffic of the legitimate, tra legitimate, which comes from the OXIA generated. But in generally, the legitimate DNS traffic and legitimate NTP traffic is not blocked and is delivered to the victim of BDNS attack. Oh, now we can see that the all attacks are stopped, except one. We will come back to this later to analyze what is going here. I stop the data, data collection and quickly switch to the our MX peering router. You can see that there is a uh, six rules instantiated in the mitigate firewall filter. So now we are going to see what it is. Show <coughs> camera configuration instance. Right, so the first filter is uh, discarding UDP traffic with the source port 19, so it's a car gen traffic. The second, so it just simple UDP flow. Second term is more interesting, it's a DNS, but it looks into the payload and, look it, and looks for these this uh, bit string 
on the third after 31st beat of the L4 payload. And this double F at that position, and actually, actually this 00FF is a query type any, which is the fingerprint of the amplification attack. Uh, then we have another destination address, Kargen uh, attack, and we can see also the TCP synth root attack stop, stop also with the uh, flex filter. Okay, so let's look closer on our attack, and we can see that these attacks are mostly stopped in a very few seconds after it it's launched. Let's do some zooming. All right. The longest the longest one was TCP and fruit because of their low rate it takes a little bit longer for the detection engine to realize that this is ongoing attack. When we scroll to the and we can see that some traffic is not stopped. So this synfoot attack here is not stopped. The reason for that is because their rate is so low that the detection, uh, DDoS detection engine just consider it as not significant for the uh, collateral damage for the network resource consumption. With that, the demo is over, so I would like you to just focus a here for the moment and see what is the takeaway. Take we show that we can be very fine grade in attack mitigation on the MX router, specifically for the DNS amplification attack, which we stopped while the legitimate traffic for the same uh, five tuple was allowed. Same for NTP. The solution is uh, conserve router resources if the Low volume attack like one of our TCP fluid is ongoing. It does not necessarily creates the filter, because our goal is to pre uh, is to prevent the link overutilization, not to protect every against every single small attack. It's quite fast. That's much faster than most uh, netflow based detection allows. And this is a demo of feasibility. We do this with the Correro, we can uh, do this with the other vendors as well. Finally, I would like to make a statement that mitigation on the Max, mitigation on the router, allows to reduce the and mitigate high volume DDoS attacks. For the application layer attacks, for the some of low volume, low speed, um, stake exhaustion attacks, the scrubber infrastructure is still necessary. The deep packet inspection, even deeper than flex filter allows, is still necessary. But because the majority of high volume attack could be stored on the MX, the requirements for the capacity on the scrubber is reduced significantly, so the cost of the overall solution. Thank you very much.